Welcome back, everyone. Let's continue searching these cells. In the last episode, we found a couple of drawers, one of which has a mirror on the back, and a tile with a weird 14 looking pattern on it in red and blue. And I believe we just, just about wrapped up in this room. So let's go and look. Or actually, let's, let's look. I think there's one more thing we want to look at here. I already took the drawer out of this desk. Yeah, okay. Nothing to do there. So let's see. Room number three. I can just barely see a mirror from the light coming through the ceiling. Sure it would be nice if that mirror was a little lower down. It looks like it's the same height as the mirror on the right. I wonder if that means anything. Hmm. It's a sink, but there's no light shining on it. It's hard to be sure because it's so dark in here. But I don't think there's anything going on with this sink. The faucet is too hard to turn. Uh, what can we do with this beam of light? What's the deal with this lighting here? There's just this one beam of light. The rest of the place is too dark. I can't see anything. There's no way we can explore the rest of this room. What if we used a drawer with a mirror on the bottom? I don't remember which one it is. There's a ray of light in the center of the room. Must be the other drawer. Oh yeah! We can probably use this mirror to reflect the light. Now I just gotta figure out where to reflect the light. Maybe if I go somewhere that's a little easier to shine light on. He stands in the middle of the room. When I shine light on the mirror in the back... Is that a number? So if I shine light on this mirror, then I get to see some numbers. I see a 4 on the left and a 7 on the right. 4 and 7. So if I shine a light in the mirror in the back... I get it. If I shine light on a mirror, a symbol appears. The left one has a sun, and the right one's got a moon symbol. I'm gonna remember this. So we got sun, moon, four, seven. Hmm. Well, the only place we've seen sun or moon is inside the toilets. So it must have something to do with that. An old school toilet. And at this point, the only thing you can manipulate in this room is that string. Chances are they made this puzzle so someone wouldn't trigger it by accident. I guess I should just keep pulling on this thing. Alright, here goes. Second pull. Third pull. And that makes four. Can you hear a sound? Did you just hear something? I did, but it doesn't look like anything's happened here. Huh. I wonder what that sound was. Let's go to the next room. The fact that Junpei starts counting the pulls is a big hint that you're doing the right thing there. So it's, it's not like you have to just guess. I think this is a fairly well-designed puzzle here. So this is what the moon symbol was pointing to, huh? They probably made it so someone wouldn't trigger it by accident. If that's the case... One. Second time. And a third time. Fourth time. Fifth time. This is the sixth consecutive time. And seven. There's that sound again. It happens whenever I pull that string a couple of times. Junpei, did you hear something from the other room? The other room? You mean from the dark room? Let's go see. Well, we took the drawer out, but nothing happened. Of course. There's no way you could hide a puzzle in something that small. Yeah, I know, still. It seems like they might try to... Huh, what's that? It looks like there's something... Huh. It looks like there's something in there. The back of the drawer. And if you investigate... One of these drawers... Has some stuff on the back. Jinpei. What's that bump behind the drawer? Don't ask me. Oh, don't boys love that sort of thing? Just figured you'd know. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. It sounded like something falling. What was that? I heard it too. Let's open the drawer. Ah. There's a tile in here. 
I guess that's what made that noise, huh? I see. The drawers weren't the same size. That's why the tile didn't get knocked down by the other drawer. Yeah, so we brought the drawer from the other room in here, because the drawer from this room doesn't have that mark on the back. It's flat. So now we have two tiles, and they both look the same. Now we heard a noise back here, so let's go investigate that. Anything... Ah, another desk. Well, what do you know? Well, this door opens easily enough. Two more of these 14 tiles. There's a bunch of weird lines on this tile thing. I don't get this. I don't think I can figure this one out on my own. And that's a tip for you to go and... We got two of them. That's a tip for you to go and investigate it somewhere where one of the other people is. Take a look at this tile here. See, if you look real close, the three red lines here are on top of the other ones. The red lines? Yeah. So that's what you're meant to look at. 14. And since everything in this game so far has... All the number puzzles have had something to do with hexadecimal. It becomes a pattern more and more as you go through. But at this point, you're just supposed to think, Oh, tiles. There's tiles on this door. Okay. Well, it looks like we've investigated all the rooms. The only mystery left is that door. Alright. Let's crack that mystery then. We've got four tiles. And there are a bunch of tiles that are the same size up on the wall here. So if we replace four of the tiles on the wall with the ones we've got, that should open the door. Well, there's only one way to find out. The question is, which four tiles? You can probably guess, since there's only one letter up there that's repeated four times, and it would make sense for you to take the same letter off. But if you look at hexadecimal, I love explaining the math of these puzzles. If you look in hexadecimal, uh, 14 written in hexadecimal is letter E. So. We uh, start swapping these tiles out, replace all the E's with 14's. Hey, did you do something on unlock? Does that mean we got it right? Yes, it looks like we did. The 14 hidden on this tile, if you convert that to hexadecimal, it's an E. Basically, the E's in emergence are the 14's from the tiles. So if we replace it, that gives up the answer. Do you really care why it worked? Let's just get out of here. Yes, let's go. They passed through the open door and headed to the next room. Whoops, that's not what I want. Junpei jogged down the short staircase and looked around. What the hell is this place? The words had sprung unbidden to his lips, but it was clear why. Junpei shivered. Lotus and Seven reached the bottom of the stairs and stopped short, terrified. This room is really creepy. I think we ought to get the hell out of here, now. He jogged up the stairs on the opposite side of the room and shook the door on the wall next to the catwalk. It didn't open, and he muttered to himself. Figures. It's locked, isn't it? Yep. I don't know why I thought this one would be any different. Junpei looked around the room again. In the center of it was a chair. The back of it was covered with electrodes, connected to a nest of wires. Beneath it was a strange glass panel. Junpei wasn't sure what it was for, but it made him uncomfortable. Whatever might have been beyond the glass, Junpei couldn't tell. It was too dark. Junpei turned to look at the right side of the room. There was a table covered with a piece of cloth. Parts of the cloth were stained with something that looked suspiciously like blood. On top of the table were a number of metal instruments. Junpei didn't know what they were for, and he had a feeling he didn't want to find out. His mind began to imagine what could have taken place in that dark, cold room. The things he imagined were not pleasant. Junpei shook his head in an attempt to clear it, and tried to focus on something else. Anyway, we don't want to stay here any longer than we got to. Let's figure out the puzzle and get the hell out of here. Come on. (laughs) 
The Torture Room. This is a fun one. Alright, let's see. Where to begin? Let's look at this table of torture instruments. There are a number of ominous looking tools and instruments here. Let's see. We've got an adze and a hammer, a pair of forceps, and these other things are too old and broken. I have no idea what they are. Hey, doesn't this wrench look way too new to be here with all this other stuff? Yes, it does. I didn't notice it before you mentioned it, but it's not rusty at all. Nice clean new wrench. Probably important. That's the entrance. Or uh, yes, that's the entrance. And over here. Oh, we got some stuff. All the dials are pointing in different directions. Maybe something will happen if we turn them? Ha! Shoot. They're all rusted. I guess turning them doesn't really do anything. So those do nothing. Red, yellow. You think the colors mean something? No idea. I mean, red looks more dangerous, but other than that... The bottom of this one looks like it's covered in rust. I don't think it'll move at all. Okay, the red lever doesn't do anything. These levers have got to turn something on. Of course they would. All they can do is turn something on or off. What's important is what they turn on or off. Don't say the floor is going to suddenly open up. I can see some oil or something down there at the base of the lever. Yeah, it feels like it's got some movement to it. I should be able to pull this one. Alright, let's pull the lever. Is that... water? What the hell? What's going on? Will you calm down? It's just water going somewhere. It sounds like it's underneath us. That means the floor... oh! Junpei, look! What's she... oh damn. I can see through the glass now. There are a couple of letters in the color of blood written on the shark's belly. It's dead. Looks like the letters are E, D, B, and F. Whatever these are for has to be in this room somewhere. E, D, B, and F. Well, we saw some letters over here that we didn't get to yet. There are a bunch of buttons here with letters A through F. Let's push some of them. Down you go. So if I press it again... Yes, thank you for teaching me how buttons work. D-B-F. What? There's a strange noise coming from the chair. It looks like it's been turned on. I guess the puzzle here was that the power had to be sent in a specific way. Hmm. Well, it's pretty easy. They just write the answer on the shark. Can I click on these? Oh, look at these. Hmm. A really creepy chair. The manacles make me think it was used to torture people. Well, we can't open these manacles without a key. Hmm. There's some sort of weird symbol on them. What kind of symbol? Well, if I got this right, I think it's the sun symbol. Hmm. So we need to look around for a key. Well, if you were paying attention earlier, you might have noticed this. The cover's bolted on there pretty good. Should be able to get these bolts off with the wrench we just found, though. Sweet! It's open! The hole's too small. You can't see in, even with the cover off. Well, you can't see in, but I think there's enough room to stick your arm in. Are you sure you want to do that? There could be something dangerous in there. Okay, I admit it. That scares me a little, but we need to see if there's anything useful in there. Alright, here we go. Arm into the hole. Hey, I think I feel something. It's small, cold, and hard. Doesn't look like there's anything else in here. Alright, let's see what this thing is. The sun key. It's all starting to come full circle now. We found a sun symbol already on these manacles, so we should be able to open them with the sun key, right? The sun key should fit into the keyhole on these manacles. Sure enough does. Alright, sun key, in you go. And yes! Great, they're open. I don't think we're going to need the sun key again in here, though. It just seems unlikely. Alright, sun key, you've done your job. Into my pocket with you. Well... They're open. What are you going to do now? Let's just look around some more. I got a feeling that something will happen. Right. We should try and figure out what the device over in the corner is for, at least. He's referring to this. There's something on the screen. This device will conduct the experiment. Once the experiment has been completed, the door will unlock. 
First, adjust the switches to match the blocks in the sample above. Huh? I don't know what this thing is. We gotta figure out this puzzle. It's right next to a torture chair. Whatever it is, I don't think it's good. Well, we just adjust the switches to match the blocks up on top, right? We adjust the switches shown at the four corners of the screen, then press the check button. Chenpei, we don't know what this thing does. You can always come back to it later. There are lots of other things you could do. This is the one puzzle where I, I admit I just I don't really understand how it works. I just mostly do trial and error. You turn these switches on and off, and they seem to control like a certain amount of blocks. So like this one will for each coordinate. So like this one will turn on one block in this this row. And this one will turn on three blocks in this row. So if I add those together, it'll make four. No, it's still just three. I, so I, I don't really know what what exactly is going on here. But the goal is just to match what's on the other side, so. And they say top display, because this is obviously from a 3DS or a DS, so they're talking about the top screen of the DS. Not exactly a fourth wall break, but pretty close. That looks right. Like I say, it's, it's, with this it's just quicker to do trial and error. I got that just from goofing around. It gets a little harder in a second. Adjustment is completed. Now proceeding to the execution phase. To complete the experiment, data must be collected from subject. Once preparation is finished, place subject in chair. Whoa, whoa. I thought we solved the puzzle already. What does it mean by preparation? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. I think this means one of us has got to sit in the chair. Well, Seven's never going to fit in that thing. It's either you or me, Junpei. Collecting data. I wonder if it's going to run electricity through the subject. There's a human head on the screen. Maybe it's going to zap the brain with a little electricity? This really doesn't sound safe. Uh, anyway, we've still got to prepare. We can talk about this after we figured out what it means by preparation, alright? Well, he wants us to prepare, so maybe we ought to ask you what we need to do. What do we need to do? The restraining device is unlocked. Please seat subject in device. The message on the screen was disturbingly detached. Well, like we thought, it's not going to work unless someone sits in it. How ironic that this would be the situation in which this slim, beautiful body is useful. Lotus, are you sure? I can sit in it and you can solve... Junpei's right. If we screw it up... Seven couldn't bring himself to finish the thought. His eyes fell to the floor. Junpei followed them. Beneath them was the dead shark, floating underneath the glass. Perhaps it had been killed by an electric shock. I'll be fine. Even if I fall in, the shark is already dead. But... No one likes an indecisive man, Junpei. I can still give you advice in the chair, too, you know. I just don't want to stay in this room any longer than we have to. Go over to that screen and let's get this over with. After her words that made it, had made it clear that Lotus would book no argument, she turned and walked toward the chair without hesitation. But she did not sit down. Despite what she had said, she did indeed feel hesitation. Her legs shook. Look, do you think you could do me one last favor? Don't say last. You're making me nervous. Just listen. If something happens to me, I want you to tell my daughters that I love them very much. No, tell them that I will always love them. Daughters? You've, you've got kids? Yes, I do. I suppose they're about your age, Junpei. They're twins. I had them when I was young, after some things happened. Their names are Nona and- Wait, wait! Nona?! Junpei's words shot out before he even realized what he was saying. He remembered the story Seven had told him. Aoi, Light, and Nona. Those were their names, well, some of them. The kids that were there, in the experiment, I mean. What the hell? What's wrong with you? Lotus took a step back away from Junpei. Seven just looked as shocked as Junpei. He blinked his eyes rapidly, as if he weren't sure he was completely awake. No way, it couldn't. Lotus, is your last name Kashiwabara? Lotus's eyes went wide. Huh, uh, how do you know that? Are you serious? What the hell is this? There's no way you're that kid's mom. That kid? 
What do you mean, that kid? Why are you acting like you've met her? Seven's brow furrowed. I have. What? Yeah, I... I met one of your kids. When? Nine years ago. Where? On this ship. Why were you... It's not a short story. I don't care how long it is. Tell me, please. What happened here? Seven glanced at Junpei, then turned back to Lotus and began to speak. It was the same story Junpei had heard only minutes before, every detail. At last, Seven finished. Lotus shook her head. Oh my god. Everything I've been looking for the last nine years. The person who had all the answers was right here. Looking for? Yes, that's right. Nine years ago, my daughters disappeared. Then, nine days later, they came back. They never told me what had happened to them over those nine days. I took them to the doctor, but I was told they hadn't been hurt in any way. Still, I was sure they'd been through something terrible. So I couldn't bring myself to force them to talk about it. If I did, then I'd force them to relive whatever horrors they'd been through. I didn't have any choice. I had to try to ignore it and move on. A few months passed. Gradually, they started to act like they always had, before they disappeared. They smiled and made jokes and did all the silly things kids do. It got harder and harder for me to ask them about what had happened. How can I ask them to remember that? Eventually, I knew there was no way I could do it. But I'm still a mother. I couldn't simply forget that something terrible had happened to my children. So I decided I would investigate what had happened on my own. I would find out what had happened during those nine missing days. What did you find out? Nothing. The police pretended to be concerned, but they didn't do anything. Once the 16 children who'd gone missing came back, things were just... swept under the rug. Even the media didn't talk about what had happened. I figured someone was probably paying or threatening them to keep their mouths shut. Cradle Pharmaceutical. No, probably something even bigger than that. Cradle Pharmaceutical? Have you heard of them before? No, that's the first time I've ever heard that name. Seven, how did you find out that Cradle Pharmaceutical was connected to the kidnappings in the first place? I figured finding out whatever the victims had in common would lead me to the culprit. That's what any good cop does. What did they have in common? Every single one of the kids who disappeared had gone to this one hospital at some point. The hospital was one of a bunch that were under the control of Cradle Pharmaceutical. After that, it was just about connecting the dots. The hospital? The hospital? For a while, I was trying to get some kind of story out of the kids at the hospital. One of them told a weird story. What was it? Have you heard about the Gonsville experiment? I guess all these kids had to go through it while they were at the hospital. I think it was passed off as some sort of counseling. Seven cleared his throat and proceeded to explain the Gonsfeld experiment. First, subjects Q and A are put into separate rooms, far away from one another. Then a series of video images are shown to subject Q, who is told to send the images to subject A by thinking about them. Subject A, on the other hand, is put in a large reclining chair and given a blindfold. With their senses cut off, A is asked to guess what images Q is looking at. Oh yes, I've heard of that. It's a famous telepathy experiment, isn't it? Telepathy. Telepathy. Junpei rolled the word over in his mind. That's how the experiment on this ship was supposed to work. The experiment to control people, right? Yeah. I don't know if any of the telepathy stuff really exists, but maybe someone from Cradle Pharmaceutical bought into it. Hmm. Lotus grunted. Seven had been thinking hard for the last several minutes and finally spoke. Even if that is the case, I still don't get how that has anything to do with any of this. The nonary game, Zero. Why we were kidnapped. What does any of that have to do with telepathy? I know I brought all this up, but I have no idea. Maybe none of this stuff is connected after all. Then in that moment of silence, a cold voice echoed down from the ceiling. No subject has been detected. Unless a subject is detected within 60 seconds, all power will be shut down. 
System recovery is estimated to take one hour. If you wish to proceed with the experiment, please see subject in the restraining device. Whoa, that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. No, that, that's not what we... Just hurry up and get it over with. Junpei, I'm counting on you. R right. Lotus sat down on the chair. Junpei looked at her one last time, then made his way to the monitor. Lotus, please, tell me right away if you feel anything weird. You worry too much. Now get on with it and be a man, or June's gonna leave you. Lotus was putting on the best act she could manage, but her legs were shaking so much that if she hadn't been sitting, she likely would have fallen down. Failure was not acceptable. Junpei took one last deep breath and stared at the monitor. Alright, so we finished the back of the head, now we have to do the sides. So we have... Basically, the same goal is to match the top. Except now each switch has two settings. One, two, and three. One, two, and off. We've got to work this out. I'm going to start by putting everything on max settings. And you look at the head from two different sides this way, too. Oh, that actually looks right on this side. Holy crap, I just lucked into it. It's twos on the left and ones on the right. I swear I didn't memorize that. The experiment has concluded. The door will now unlock. I can hear the door unlocking. And now we've got a new message. Release subject from restraining device. Lotus, are you alright? Yes, I am. I'm glad nothing bad happened, but I do think my life just got a little shorter. Hold on, I'll get you out right away. Shouldn't take long for Seven and me to get her out of there. Let's get out of here now. Being a guinea pig is not for me. Damn straight. I don't ever want to see this thing again. Well, let's get out of here.